I've never directly seen someone react to a divorce, an immediate divorce that is. That was until I was awake earlier than usual and my mum walked out of her bedroom at the end of the house, the room that had big windows that faced the street even though the bottle brush had grown a bit too much in the summer and into the lounge room. She put a cigarette in her mouth and chewed it. Her face scrunched as if she was looking into the sun and the sun was showing her its asshole. Repulsed and pain. Her eyes teared slightly. First, she turned on the radio that was above the stove, and then she went down to the gas to light her smoke. It clicked a few times before it caught, and she was momentarily shrouded in a puff of cigarette until she sucked it all into her mouth aggressively. She put her hand on her hip, turned the radio off, and turned on the TV. We listened to the Arabic news. Ash fell onto the floor. It took me three tries to get the toaster to stay down, and Mum smoked the entire cigarette in the time my toast took to cook. She was a shaky woman, a little small for her own frame and grass-like in her sturdiness, and she quivered like a kite string about to snap. Mornings were my second favourite time of the day, when the sun came through the Venetians and striped itself onto the fridge, and the entire kitchen became a jungle of shadow and light. But this time the bars imprisoned us, and everything was too hot. She took another cigarette and then scrunched the empty packet into a ball and threw it to the top shelf of the pantry. I picked it up off the floor when it fell back down again. Then she went out onto the back deck and opened a large container of dog food. She threw fistfuls of it off the balcony onto the grass and watched as the neighborhood's crows dropped in from surrounding trees. One lorikeet, holding itself sideways against a branch of our poor tree, rocketed down to the ground and bounced on the grass. Mom pointed at it the concentration of its colour, the scramble of black surrounding it. Mum pointed at it, took a long drawer of her cigarette and said, that's me. That's when I realised Dad wasn't home. Margaret, a Louisiana Calahoo leopard dog, blind in one eye, relatively relaxed but food driven, was barking at the back door. Let the ethan dog out. And when I came back upstairs, Mum had changed into a bikini, applied coconut oil not as liberally as the bottle might have suggested, and fished out her blue beach hat and a striped towel. A piece of toast hung out of the side of her mouth. I still hadn't said anything for the day. She went downstairs. I went to my room. I opened up the exercise book at the bottom of the top drawer of my bedside table. I flipped to the third back page and marked the date. It was a month off my estimation that outlasted themselves by a month. Then I went into my parents' room. Strong aquamarine walls with shell patterns carved into the roof. A chandelier of pippies that I'd made for year 11 art class. The bed was made, the front window was open, with incense burning along the sill. The radio was playing the 8 o'clock version of the news. The rug on the floor had been rolled up to fit under the bed. Dad's bedside table was empty. I checked the closet. His clothes were all still there. The incense was musk or sandalwood. It floated itself out in streams that held themselves together for a few seconds and then disbanded. Still, the room smelled like shoe sweat and mum's tinny cream and dad's hemorrhoid cream, which she had also left behind. I was doing a press order on something not fully dead. I went to dad's sock drawer and found his cash sock. It still had money in it. I took $50 for my work. With housing prices on the rise, soon families would be forced to downsize and dismantle. I unplugged the radio and threw it out the window. I went and got it that afternoon when it started to rain, and Mum had said all she wanted to do was listen to Sam Cook. Why was it downstairs? Were you using it? School assignment. When I went outside to the pool that morning, mostly to check that she hadn't thrown herself in because she didn't know how to swim, I found small blisters of cordial on the tiles downstairs, with ants creating electrocuted wigs to tear around them. She was eating an ice block, and it dripped from the stick onto her hands and, red, ran, and ran red all over her fingers. It was midday and she was drunk, red in the face and leaving spots of herself all over the house. He left us. I got her another wine and an umbrella. She looked up at me and her bottom lip trembled. Her whole face was red from the sun, but also pale. There was nothing under the red skin. I patted her on the shoulder and Margaret sat next to her. I went back upstairs. I flipped through the exercise book at the bottom of the top drawer of my bedside table. I found the second back page. I wrote down a date a fortnight away. I would have written a month, but it left his hemorrhoid cream this time. <laughs>